Happy April Fool's Day, folks! Oh, is it ever good to be back? I feel like the powers that be really decided to be funny this year by asking me to talk about unsolvable space mysteries, like I'm an expert or something. Sure, I consider myself an expert on aliens after this past year, but things NASA can't answer? I guess I'll try my best. Let me know what you think is going to be on today's list in the comments, and let's get into it. Alrighty, let's kick off today with an obvious choice, dark matter, and just dark energy as a whole. And no, I'm not talking about the dark energy that fills a room when a narcissist like my mother walks into it. That's a whole other kind of scary energy that'll give me nightmares we don't need. Alright, let's see if I can try and make this crystal clear, or as much as my artsy fartsy brain can. So we see some effects that we can't explain with our current understanding of physics. So we know something must be there to cause that effect. We give these observed effects, or I guess their causes, a placeholder label. Dark matter and dark energy. Nothing more, nothing less. You have to note that these names do not imply that dark matter must turn out to be a form of matter, or dark energy must be a form of energy. It only implies that the observed effect is as if something matter-like, or energy-like, in the case of dark energy, were acting. What's really causing these effects? Welcome to one of the mysteries of the universe, everybody. Alternatively, our current understanding of physics could be way off. But since we keep testing it and finding it in accordance with experimental results that seem unlikely, well, it, unless physics behaves totally differently elsewhere. Once again, don't look at me, I didn't take physics in high school. I took every social science course I could instead for a reason. Despite making up about 95% of the universe, dark matter and dark energy remain one of the biggest puzzles in modern cosmology. To be specific, dark matter makes up about 27% of the universe's mass energy content. Yet we don't know exactly what it is, or how it interacts with regular matter, aside from its gravitational effects. It's like a silent artist sculpting our cosmos. We can't observe it directly, but we do see its influence on the way galaxies rotate and cluster. The gravitational effects of dark matter are most easily observed in the outer regions of galaxies where stars move at speeds that aren't possible unless there is more matter present than we can actually see. Another proof is when light from distant galaxies pass through regions filled with dark matter, and the light is bent in a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing, which is something I've, I know I've talked about before. Dark energy is no less of a mystery, making up 68% of the universe's mass energy content. It's a force that appears to work against gravity on a cosmic scale. So if we're going to go back in time, back to the 1920s, Edwin Hubble's observations revealed an expanding universe, with galaxies moving away from each other. Fast forward to 1998, studies showed this expansion wasn't slowing down as expected. Instead, it was accelerating. Dark energy was the name for the force causing this acceleration. Is your brain spinning yet? <laughs> don't worry folks, we're just getting started. Here's something else we don't know. The origins of fast radio bursts, otherwise known as FRBs. What the heck are they? Well, they're like the universe's camera flash, illuminating the universe with flashes of energy that last milliseconds, and were first identified in 2007. Technically, the Parkes Observatory in Australia made the first detection of an FRB as it blasted out of the small megalanic cloud, a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way, back in 2001. However, this event would not be discovered until 2007, when astrophysicist Duncan Lorimer and colleagues found it in archival data from the observatory. Yeah, sorry to get all confusing again, it couldn't be helped. I like being specific. A key feature of FRBs is their dispersion sweep, which is similar to radial pulsars. Basically, and I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible, they send a variety of radio frequencies that arrive at different times because of the way they interact with the interstellar medium. The origin of FRBs has always been uncertain and probably always will be. Proposed candidates include magnetars, which are rapidly rotating neuron stars with powerful magnetic fields, merging faint, dense stellar remnants called white dwarves, collapsing neutron stars or blitzers, and colliding galaxies. Yeah, there's a lot. The initial excitement was followed by skepticism when a similar dispersion pattern was observed in multiple locations. In 2013, four additional FRBs were discovered that shared key features with the previous bursts but had even higher dispersion measures, suggesting they traveled even further. This discovery suggested the universe could be full of these flashes. So until an FRB can be traced to a specific galaxy or detected across different wavelengths, the full story behind them will remain a mystery. Some things are certain about FRBs, however, like for one, their sources must be highly energetic themselves and as they travel, these short-lived radio wave blasts can gather information about cosmic environments, like the clouds of interstellar gas they pass through. Which makes studying FRBs a pressing concern for astronomers who want to map the universe. Just how powerful are these buggers? 
Well, at their sources, FRBs have a lot of energy. Like in a millisecond, some FRBs can blast out as much energy as the sun emits in three Earth days. Because they come from billions of light years away, however, FRBs lose energy as they travel. So when they reach Earth, they're much less powerful. When radio telescopes spot FRBs from Earth, the strength of the signal is similar to a mobile phone signal from the moon. Ah, uh, yes. How could I do today without talking about the WOW signal? On August 15th of 1977, astronomer Jerry Ammon detected a powerful, brief, and unique radio signal using the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. He was so impressed by the result that he circled on the computer printout. The reading of the signal's intensity, which was 6EQUJ5, and wrote the comment WOW beside it leading to the widely used name. The entire signal sequence lasted for the full 72 second window during which Big Ear was able to observe it, but has not been detected since, despite several subsequent attempts by the team and, well, a lot of other folks. Now, the string 6EQUJ5, commonly misinterpreted as a message encoded in the radio signal, represents in fact the signal's intensity variation over time, expressed in the particular measuring system adopted for the experiment. The signal itself appeared to be an unmodulated continuous wave, although any modulation with a period of less than 10 seconds or longer than 72 seconds would not have been detectable. The signal intensity was measured as signal to noise ratio, with the noise or baseline averaged over the previous few minutes. The signal was sampled for 10 seconds and then processed by the computer, which took two seconds. We love math. It was tightly constrained to a narrow band of radio frequencies, something nature doesn't usually do. It also wasn't broadcast from Earth or a passing satellite, like it was something else, something special. It appeared to come from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius, so if there are any uh, horoscope girlies watching, please let me know in the comments what that means. A lot of folks, including John Krauss, the director of Big Ear, have suggested that the WOW signal could be a potential sign of extraterrestrial intelligence, as the signal's characteristics were so unlike what we typically observe. Don't worry, I'll save my usual alien theories for another day. We'd run out of time if I went in depth today, trust me. And ever since, people have been hunting for its origins. Astronomers conducted a focused search for a sun-like star that was considered a plausible source for the signal, but turned out it didn't fit the criteria. And once again, we're still waiting on that answer. Is it ever gonna happen? Probably not. Look, I know this is an obvious one, but black holes are the ultimate space conundrum. Think of an object so dense that no light can escape its gravitational pull. Now make it millions to billions of times more massive than our sun. Yeah, that's what a supermassive black hole is. So how do massive things like this form? Well, we don't actually know for sure. NASA might have some theories, but since these behemoths literally birth galaxies, nobody knows. There are some popular theories floating out and about out there, so let's dissect them. The first theory is that, like their smaller, stellar mass siblings, supermassive black holes might be formed from the gravitational collapse of a celestial object. So in this case, it might be a massive gas cloud in the early stages of galaxy formation, like how a star forms, but on a vastly larger scale. Another theory suggests that a regular stellar black hole could, you know, eat surrounding material over millions of years, gradually growing in size until it reaches supermassive status. A similar theory is that when a cluster of stellar black holes collide, all their mass coalesces into one supermassive black hole. Whatever the case, most astronomers concur that once formed, these supermassive black holes drive the activity of galaxies. But at the end of the day, that's just a hypotenuse, which is a really fancy way to say scientific guessing game. Until something crazy changes in the world, we shall never know for sure. Alrighty, I'll end today with the biggest mystery of it all. What caused the Big Bang? Okay, I'll allow a single moment for everybody to mentally let the Bare Naked Ladies theme song from the popular sitcom run through their head. And moment up. So it's a very suggestive question. To find out the cause of the Big Bang, you assume a prior event that apparently had a universe spawning event. But it's not entirely clear if the word prior has any meaning here. Perhaps the Big Bang not only amounted to the creation of matter and energy, but also the origin of space and time itself. And in that case, it's difficult to talk about a logical cause. Pardon me, for context, the Big Bang Theory is the leading explanation for how the universe began. And I think the easiest way to explain is that it says the universe as we know it started with an infinitely hot and dense single point that inflated and stretched, first at unimaginable speeds, and then at a more measurable rate over the next 13.7 billion years to the still expanding cosmos that we know today. Existing technology doesn't yet allow astronomers to literally peer back at the universe's birth, meaning much of what we understand about the Big Bang comes from mathematical formulas and models. If you want to look up the formulas, that's entirely up to you. I'm not even going to try to break those down because I'd get lost partway through and then I'd be rambling and we'd lose time. 
you don't believe me, ask my friends what happens to my brain when I get overwhelmed. It's not pretty. This is heavy philosophical stuff, so it's hardly surprising that cosmologists have tried to circumvent the spontaneous creation of a universe out of nothing. Until recently, some scientists held the view that the universe would someday recollapse, eventually leading to another bang. But we've since learned that the current expansion of the universe will probably never stop, so that idea fell out of favor. Instead, some physicists suggest that the Big Bang was caused by our empty four-dimensional space-time colliding with another universe that floats next to ours in a higher-dimensional bulk space. Even more mind boggling is this. If something caused the Big Bang, what caused the cause? Don't worry, if your brain hurts, we're almost done. Okay folks, like I said, that's been it from me once again. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly, and if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more NASA criticisms from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time you lovely spooky people.